Hello, welcome back from the Grand Rapids Auto Show. I am here with my first time, believe it or not, with the 2023 Bolt EUV. Now, this is the bigger of the two small EVs that Chevy offers right now. These are getting easier to find, but they still are a bit of a wait if you're looking for them. my first time seeing them it's bigger than i thought but i've also only seen the regular bolt prior to this and i gotta say the uv does make a lot of sense starting prices for these were twenty eight thousand dollars now this one is specced about 10 grand more than that but i think it's worth it still for just under 40k to have 250 miles of range a 60 uh, kilowatt hour battery pack is not bad because you're gonna be able to charge that fast it's smaller so it's gonna be efficient if you're looking for a semi affordable step into EVs you need a little bit of extra room the Bolt EUV might be something to consider so we're gonna take a look inside we're gonna get a tour of this and find out you know who's the Bolt EUV for let's let's look all right, I am sitting inside the Bolt EUV right now, and I gotta say, I was just yesterday playing around in the Solterra, which is Subaru's entry-level uh, electric, fully electric vehicle, and I definitely would compare it to that, but it is, granted, about 10K cheaper. I feel the same exact setup almost, but it's a little bit roomier in here than the Solterra as well. If you remember, the Solterra had kind of an awkward semi-heads-up display dash. This is a little more standard, kind of reminds me of my Tesla Model X looking up here. Just a smaller screen. All said and done, I think Chevy's got a pretty nice product here. I, again, I've always complained thinking they're small. They've had their bad press days with some, uh, we won't say, say it here, but a couple might have caught on fire. <laughs> but I think they're past that, and this shows it. So we have Super Cruise. We have everything on this. We've got a moonroof, which is actually pretty big. We'll take a look at that shortly. And a gorgeous, what I would say probably is like a 13-inch screen, maybe 14-inch. It's great. All said and done, I really enjoy this. If you've been in a Blazer, a Chevy Blazer, this is probably the exact same size. A Trailblazer, not a Blazer, sorry. The, the Blazer's bigger, the Trailblazer's smaller. This has got to be really close. Let's take a look at the back and the storage and see how it compares. Okay, sitting in the back seat is where you start to feel a tiny bit cumbersome. If you could see me poking, I'm not even that tall. I'm closer, just under six feet, and I can feel my hair grazing the top of this. It's a little snug, I gotta say. But remember, the price point of this is so low, and if you are like not having people back here, then it's not even an issue. But even with someone back here, you know, you could handle a decent car ride and it's fine. You could slouch and get cozy. If you have kids, perfect. There is not a lot of like AC options I'm seeing. In fact, I don't see a single vent, which <laughs> might be an oversight, but it probably helps with that range if you're not cranking the vent. But what you do have is a USB-C and a standard old school USB port for charging or whatever the back seat might need. All said and done, the looks in here, pretty great. Let's take a look at the seat texture really quick. As you can see, this premium, uh, higher trim level, you do get cool things like red stitching. You get some cool textures throughout the vehicle. I think Chevy has came a very long way from the first bolts I've seen. Granted, it still is very affordable, and they do kind of squeak by. There's not like a mix of textures throughout the door. It's pretty basic, and like I said, I'm kind of shocked that there's no air vent back here, but it might be small enough where that's not an issue. You do have a pretty gorgeous moonroof, though. You got to give it up for that. Okay, let's finally look at the trunk. Okay, so the last thing we have to look at on the Bolt EUV is the trunk space. And this is where you're probably going to be not very thrilled if you're looking for storage. If we look down here, you guys are fine. You guys are fine. <laughs> So as we open this up, there is actually a decent amount of cargo down here. You could probably fit, I'd say like eight shoe boxes if I had to estimate. Um, it goes through there, similar to a Tesla, but not as deep. But it is the saving grace for this trunk because when you look at this, what is that? Probably only like a couple, like two carry-ons could fit back here. It is, here, let's get a little closer. I'll show you. Hopefully this angle's a little better to show off just how shallow this actually is. It's not even my full arm length. So if I open this up though, okay, as you can see, hopefully that shows up. I'll try to brighten this in post-production, but 
there is a decent amount of storage down there. I got to give it up for that. Okay, so all said and done, who is this vehicle for? If I had to frame it, I would say maybe someone, uh, maybe they recently married just a couple. They don't have kids yet. Maybe they don't have pets because this would be tough to have pets in. Uh, but you're ready to go electric and you don't want to bake, break the bank. Maybe you are uh, just got your first job and it's a nice job and you're ready to get your first new vehicle and you want to get something cool and you're looking for something out of the box. This could be a pretty good choice. I do like it overall. I got to say the price point is unbeatable. Even this fully loaded, like we said, is what? 38000 35000 That's not bad for a fully electric vehicle. Not only that, one that gets about 250 miles of range. That's comparable. That's competitive. Like I was saying, I was looking at a Solterra uh, just yesterday, and they're so loud at Toyota. <laughs> um, I was looking at the Solterra the other day, and as I mentioned, it's quite a bit more expensive than this, and maybe a little bit bigger, but at the end of the day, I would definitely check out something like this before the Solterra. No offense to the Solterra. It seemed fine. But I'm just saying, in this semi-lower price point entry to EVs, definitely consider this because I think they're popping up on lots a little more often, so you have a chance of actually getting these without waiting too long. But also, it's not bad. Give it, I obviously didn't get to drive it today, but from what I've seen, they're not bad. So check it out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please explore all the videos from the car show because we have so many EVs we reviewed. Can't wait to let you watch those all. Um, thank you guys again for watching this, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.